Anthony Bourdain once said, There's one snack, one guilty pleasure in every great city. The dirty water hot dog in New York, the fish taco in L.A., the red hot in Chicago. For the palista, there's the mortadella sandwich. He said this in a third season episode of No Reservations, a show where, as good as it was and as much as I enjoyed it, I don't think Bourdain had yet fully found his voice. Not as an eater and a traveler, but as a sort of megaphone, amplifying the voices of the people he came across on his travels, telling their stories to the world. He also sang the praises of many another sandwich in his time. Sitting on a street-side bench in San Luis, he called the Senegalese Nadambe sandwich addictively delicious. At the Silver Palm in Chicago, he described their Three Little Pigs sandwich as unbelievable, a two-fisted symphony of pork, cheese, fat, and starch, the greatest sandwich in America. In a 2011 episode of No Reservation set in Macau, he called the Macanese pork chop bun a work of genius, comparing its importance to the invention of the wheel or the internet. My dude could get excited over a sandwich. I can dig it. I appreciate him for that. In his 2016 cookbook, Appetites, he even described his recipe for that Macanese pork chop bun as possibly the most delicious thing in the book. Yet the sandwich that most people associate him with, the one that everyone remembers as his favorite, is that Brazilian fried bologna roll, the mortadella from Bardomane in São Paulo. This one he called a steaming heap of thinly sliced mortadella, melted cheese, gooey bread, four hot inches of love, baby. In that manner he had of veering moment to moment between the poetic and the profane. In that same cookbook, he finished his chapter on sandwiches with a recipe for that mortadella sandwich. A half pound of fatty force meat, fried up crisp and dripping with melted provolone, enveloped in a pan-toasted Kaiser roll with mayonnaise and Dijon mustard, and that's it. There's a similar sandwich served at Ocheval in Chicago that used to get as many cheers as their cheeseburger. Just fried bologna, melted cheese, and Dijonese in a toasted brioche bun. I tried it once, and it was good, but it was missing something. Slices of pickle, something, I don't know. Maybe today I'm feeling more charitable. Or maybe I am simply reveling in the reverie. The nostalgia for a voice that I had hoped to hear for years yet to come. This sandwich is good. The hot pork fat mingling with cheese and sauce dripping down my arms and onto my shirt. Tony was right when he said to serve it with a beer. The slight but targeted bitterness of this pilsner brewed by my buddies over at Blue Island Beer Company is an effective palate cleanser, a reset button between each gooey, salty, fatty bite. Raise your sandwiches to a real one, friends. Gone before his time.